everyone. My name is Adhikar. I'm a senior product manager at WorldPay. Today, I'll be talking about AIfication of financial services. It's a very interesting topic and there's lots of information to absorb. I'll try to keep it short, simple and hopefully sweet. So let's begin. So before we understand the AI repercussions in financial services, here's a quick recap of what does AI mean? What is an AI 101? So the various types of AI which exists. So first is predictive ML. So this is basically the AI which exists today and um, potentially what all financial services are using of today. So this is uh, all machine learning based, rules based, doing simple text analysis, data extraction, predictions on the basis of uh, you feeding the AI, the artificial intelligence, some rules. Now, the new hype or the current hype is about Gen AI or Generative AI. Now, this is where OpenAI and the GPT era has, has come into picture. Now, this is more capable than Predictive ML because it is multimodal, which is AI speak for saying that it can process information of various types, be it text, videos or images. It can do data summarization, it can be used for code generation, and most importantly, or what we are seeing right now, is it can do contextual conversations. Building on this, the future is going to be general intelligence or auto-generative AI. So this is basically gen AI, but with deeper context, a persistent memory, so it remembers what the previous conversations were and a system two kind of reasoning. So it can not just to summarize information or give you insight, but it can actually try to be more human-like in nature, more proactive. Now, this is where the, the future is going to go towards. Why is AI coming into so much popularity right now? So it's a case of, it's a case of uh, multiple reasons. So firstly, competent elements. So you are seeing players like Hugging Face, OpenAI, or Google's Gemini come into the market with really strong processing and really capable large language models. There is also traction. Now, ChatGPT has been one of the fastest companies to reach 10 million users. There's a lot of enthusiasm about ChatGPT and also other AI models like MidJourney, which is used for creating art. Along with all of these positive, there's also a lot of hype. So, for example, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to give some examples of what I consider hype. Oral B coming up with an AI kind of a brush. Microsoft adding adding AI into its PC. So, there's a lot of hype about, about AI right now in the tech world. And for that reason, even financial services are curious to understand what could be the repercussions or benefits for them. The potential is huge. It has uh, use cases spanning over over industries so that's why ai is becoming so crucial right now in terms of who benefits there would be three key archetypes for companies who can truly unlock the power of ai companies which are data rich so they have the network effects going on they have a large amounts of data which they can use to come up with recommendations or or insights they are very compliance driven they are focusing on 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 monitoring and governance and third the company is or the organization is product led now all of this is not possible if you are not really able to quickly test out your ideas and see if it works or not so in terms of the gen ai or the generative ai in finance today in my opinion i am largely seeing these, these use cases emerge in personal finance. So companies like Monarch and Clio are trying to use this for spend management, budgeting, and just acting as your AI buddy when it comes to, to spend management. We are seeing a lot of uptake in customer support. Almost every big bank or fintech has an AI-enabled uh, bot. Interestingly, Klarna recently claimed that their AI is able to do a work of 700 agents. So we are seeing uh, already that the conversational side of the AI is being heavily leveraged by the financial services. Now going in the future, I see that these use cases will go deeper into three key areas, which is risk and compliance, developer tools and internal process. So now let's try to unpack this a bit. So risk and compliance, so 
in terms of making real time decisions in terms of understanding the risk of the credit of of the unbanked or the underbanked population be it to b2c or b2b i see ai playing a huge part in this we are already seeing this happening on the b2c side with bnpls leveraging ai for real time credit decisioning but i see this making a huge impact on the b2b side or the trade financing side which has been largely unexplored in terms of internal processes we are seeing companies such as stripe or high radius use this to make sure that the internal data is optimized so for example you want to run a query or understand a data for your company you can just ask ai that um, hey ai I want to find me the transactions for the past 30 days. I want to figure out what has went wrong and these conversational kind of things could be converted into actual insights. This is going to really be a game changer for larger financial organizations where finding data and creating insights is often a challenge. In terms of dev tools again I think Stripe is one of those early AI leaders who are trying to integrate AI into developer experience. potentially you will see in the future this becoming omnipresent you will be seeing the developers just conversationally asking that i want to create a payment service using stripe as a payment service method using worldpay as an acquirer or any other xyz service and the ai is going to ensure that every connection comes into place with all of this ai bruhaha there is a word of caution which i feel we should be taking in a context so with ai there are certain challenges the ai hallucinations are real are a problem so this is basically making some nonsensical assumptions or creating data out of thin air we have already seen examples of how ai can just uh, sometimes go off topic So second is the data integrity or the data quality so it's basically garbage in and garbage out as my stats professor used to say if the data is not cleaned enough has not been removed of any particular biases the ai is going to be trained accordingly so companies need to be careful of what data sets the ai is getting trained is getting trained on third is governance controls in terms of monitoring what ai can and cannot do how which of these are mission critical which of these are regulatory driven and ensuring that ai has proper compliance and governance controls and fourth is over engineering simply putting ai into your product is not going to solve a problem as i gave these some examples earlier ai is a means to a problem and not the opposite way so it should be carefully helping you solve your problem rather than a solution looking for a problem so given all of this context how should fis or the financial services respond so as i i pointed out on the last slide first and foremost find the right problems to be solved using ai look for critical manually intensive task that ai can truly help you solve and can make it more optimum for you second is assess options look what's out there from a from an ai perspective uh, do you need to build buy or partner do current options meet your needs understand their abilities and limitations before trying to integrate them into your your day to day be organized i think it's very important for organizations right now to understand that ai is a critical element of of your organization and build a culture and the right talent pool which can help your organization adopt to ai and fourth and foremost the most important bit is experiment build test and iterate look at what works for you what doesn't understand the the proof of concepts so for various use cases to really understand whether ai is fit for purpose uh, for you I thank you for taking this uh, time to to hear my talk. You can find me on X or Twitter or you can just to message me on LinkedIn. I have a very searchable uh, name Adhikar Babu. Thanks for your time.